Hey guys, welcome back for another video, and before we begin today's topic, I want to give a small shout out to ArtTuber. If you guys are interested in anything anime, comic book, or drawing related, make sure to check out his channel, and it will be linked in the description below, as well as an annotation popping up right now above his icon. Make sure to check him out, and without further ado, let us begin. Most will know of, or at least a variation, of the Amityville house story, a gruesome tale of murder and spirits, but today we shall be looking into a full scope of it all, the origins, what came of it all, and the truth behind what really happened on 112 Ocean Avenue, Amityville, New York. Now in December of 1975, George and Kathy Lutz and their three children moved into what they believed to be a pleasant home in Amityville, New York. Four weeks later, however, the whole family would flee the house, never to return or move back in. In fact, the couple sold the house once more. Apparently, the realtor forgot to mention the little incident that occurred in their home from the prior owners. Before the Lutz moved into the house, it was owned by the DeFeo family, and in 1974, just a year earlier, one of the sons, Ronaldo DeFeo Jr., would brutally murder his mother, father, two brothers, and two sisters in their sleep. This event and the eventual flee of the house by the Lutz family would lead to the creation of the hit-selling novel, The Amityville Horror, written by Jay Anson. With the assistance of the Lutz family and the countless tape recordings they submitted to Anson, the story of their terrifying time spent in the house would be recorded. The Lutz family reported strange noises, smells, sightings, and apparitions, and things moving around the house. A fairly common claim for paranormal hauntings, despite the many decades that have passed after the family fleed, they remained firm to their story, which in turn had led many people to believe that the story told both in the books and then eventual movie, were nothing more than a glorified means to get rich off of a tragedy. Well, that would be the case if things were that simple. See, once more the Lust family firmly stands behind their original claims, holding true to them up until their deaths. They even admitted that the book was mainly true, understanding that Anson did in fact play up certain aspects in order to create a more intriguing story for readers. People also like to point out that the family after the Lutz did not report any types of paranormal ongoings, believing that this was indefinite proof that the family was lying. Well, even before the new family moved into the house, the Lutz claimed that the evil entity in the home had actually followed them for many years after the original time spent in the location. So either there has never been an evil spirit, or it truly did follow the Lutz. Another key point for the theories out there is that people believe that this is all some sort of mass conspiracy to get rich quick, involving DeFeo himself, the Lutz, and their attorney. Well, once more, the Lutz claim none of this is true. People should also put into consideration that DeFeo has told many variations of what went down during the night of his family's murder, hurting his own credibility in the process. As for the money aspect, the Lutz did get a small portion of royalties from their contributions into the film and book, but this was not nearly enough to remain comfortable. In fact, before and after the couple's divorce, each struggled with financial burdens. So what happened then? One thing is clear here, a sort of pattern that I hope some of you picked up upon. All of these claims, all of this speculation are coming from two opposite sides of the spectrum with each holding little to no credibility. The Lutz and the recordings they owned, well, all of them have been privately witnessed or recorded. The tapes themselves have actually not even been released to the public. We don't even know if they ever existed. We just have to go based off of their word and that family alone. With no outside witnesses reporting any strange ongoings in the home, while on the opposite side of the spectrum, there are the people speculating based off a certain tiny details that may or may not lead to different tellings of the story. So in the end, it's really up to whatever you believe in more, and either opinion is perfectly okay to find as true. Personally, I don't really know what to believe. I would like to believe that it's real, but I would also need more evidence to convince me as such. Though I would not mind reading your own thoughts in the comments below on this topic. Nonetheless, as of right now, the house still stands where it always has. 
However, there are notable changes. The address has been changed, and clear renovations and altercations to the exterior have occurred. Owners are also not so keen on ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts about snooping around their home either, which to be fair is understandable. Though if you really did want to investigate, you should probably act sooner than later. The house was just recently put onto the market, and I believe it still is, but don't entirely quote me on that because I don't know how to function Velo all that well. It will be linked in the sources below if you are interested in looking that up. But while you do, we will be wrapping things up here. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if there are any ghost stories or local house hauntings in your area, write that down in the comments below. Until then, that is all, and I hope to see you all soon. Thank you for staying with us to the end. If you enjoyed this journey, hit the like button down below and leave a comment in the comment section. I always consider suggestions for new videos and topics, so do not be shy. Also, do not forget to subscribe in order to stay up to date on all things unexplained. Until then, I hope to see you again next time as we take another trip into the realm of the unknown.